question to be asked. That story is set in a time long ago in a place far away where there was a certain jeweler who was very, very famous for the fineness of his work. His customers also included royalty, the rich and famous, as well as ordinary people. But outside his small shop, there was one of those iron signs on which hung a plaque which gave his name, the name of his small business, and a sacred symbol. Now one day, as he was bent over his workbench, all of a sudden he felt a great chill in the air. And when he looked up, a figure had entered the shop, cloaked in a black cloak, with a large cowl almost covering his face. And as the jeweler looked, he could see two horns just protruding out from the opening in the cowl. And he knew that the evil one, Iblis, had just entered his shop. Now he was quaking in his boots, thinking that Iblis had come to take him to the realms of Hades. But Iblis spoke and said, Don't worry, I haven't come to take you away. I've heard about the refinement of your work and I came to see what it was like. Oh, with great relief, the jeweler said, Oh, oh, please, please take whatever you want. You're welcome to take whatever pieces of jewelry, whatever you see. And uh, Iblis looked around and he said, I will take everything that is in the window. Oh, yes, said the jeweler. Let me gather it together for you. And he said, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. He said, uh, I, I'm, I'll, I'll come back for it. I don't know when that will be. It may be quite some time, but keep it all for me. And then, in the blink of an eye, Iblis disappeared. The wife of the jeweler came into the shop and the jeweler told her, Oh, we've just had a visit from the evil one and he wanted uh, all of his jewelry in the window. I have to take it out and put it aside for him. He's asked me to keep it for him until he returns for it. And his wife said, You stupid and foolish man! Can you not see that our blessed and beloved and only daughter is sitting in that window playing with the necklaces? The jeweler was just overwrought. What could he do? Suddenly, he had a thought. He said to his wife, Quickly, go to the silver merchant and bring back an ounce of silver for me. And so when his wife brought back the ounce of silver, the jeweler immediately got to work and he created a circle from that silver. And on it he etched a sacred saying. Hanging it on a throne, he put it around his daughter who was called Zohar around her neck and said that she must not take it off under any circumstances, else 
Iblis, the evil one, would come and take her. So the years passed, and the jeweler and his wife all but forgot about that visitation those years before when suddenly the door of the shop opened and in walked the dark clad figure of Iblis. He said to the jeweler, I have come for what belongs to me. I believe she must be about 17 years old now, and I'm claiming her for my bride. At that moment, Zoha, who had grown into a beautiful maiden, came into the shop. And when Iblis saw what was hanging around her neck, he got very, very angry. She belongs to me. I will give you seven days, and I will come back and claim what is mine. And he disappeared leaving the smell of sulfur behind him. The jeweler and his wife were beside themselves. Mm. That night, the jeweler lay down, tossing and turning, unable to sleep restfully. But in the morning, he had a thought, and taking all the wax that he used for his mold to make the jewelry, he fashioned it into a form. He painted the face, and then by means of gathering pieces from around from other merchants, he was able to create a mechanism that allowed the apparition that he had fashioned to move its head, nod, blink its eyes, and even smile. He dressed it in some of Zohar's finery. And when Iblis, the evil one, arrived, he said, I have come to claim what is mine. With that, the jeweler said, Come, Zoha. Iblis has come to take you as his bride. And with that, the curtain at the back of the shop opened, and out came the apparition in the finery. Zohar was hidden in the cupboard nearby, and the jeweler took off the throng around her neck and the, the apparition's neck and put it up on the top of the cupboard in which Zohar was hiding. Now, when Iblis moved forward to take his bride, the eyes fluttered and she bowed her head. He was much delighted at this welcome. And so he carried her off, down, 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 into the nether worlds, where he told his demons, prepare a great feast, for I am about to be wedded to this human. 
and he placed her on a throne bedecked with jewels. The demons bought liquor, they made the fire, and the revelries began. Iblis, as was his bent, imbibed more and more of the alcoholic liquors that were bought. Put more wood on the fire! And so the demons added more to the flames which grew and grew. Suddenly, the demons saw that the maiden's head had nodded forward and before their very eyes slid into the fire and completely disappeared. The demons were horrified. How could they tell Iblis that his bride had gone? But Iblis was very inebriated by this time. And so when one of the demons was courageous enough to go to him and said, uh, Your Worship, she's gone, disappeared in the flames. Iblis just said, All oh, these humans, I don't know why I ever bother with them. Bring me another flagon. And on with the festival. You know, Iblis, the evil one, never visited that jewelry store again. The question that arises out of the telling of this story is, what is the charm, what is the Amulet, and what is the talisman that this story contains? The question has been asked again and again. What is the difference? between the charm and the amulet and the talisman. And now the question is asked. What is the charm, the amulet and the talisman contained in this story? Thank you. 